y'all, it's Hip at Crafty Hip and welcome. Look at all these beautiful beads. These are just a portion of the beads I got in a secret stash box. I'll put a link up to that reveal up in the right corner. But I got those as part of the Jesse James Beads Design Ambassador Program. But you can get your own secret stash box yourself. I'll put a link to that below. Now, one of the things in that box that really caught my attention was that large crystal. And I knew immediately, I even say it in my unboxing, that it's just a little too heavy to be a pendant for a necklace. And after just a few minutes of thinking, I was like, oh my gosh, y'all, I'm going to make a sun catcher. So I took some of the other beads that they had included and decided, yeah, I'm going to put all of these together. So I pulled out that large white boho bead. There's a couple of large crystals and then some bead caps. And I'm going to break it up with some little blue rondelles. And so you see here, I am lining all these up. I had thought about it before I turned the camera on, but I hadn't lined it all up and really got it in place. So that's what I'm doing here. And I've slowed this down just a little bit so I could do this little introduction and explain what I'm going to do. But we're going we're gonna to get this back to normal speed now. All right, so I am kind of just putting those bead caps where I want to put them. And I'll bring in, like I said, those little blue rondelles as well. So sorry about that, adding a little extra time to this, but this is such a quick and easy project that, you know, I've got this all in real time so that you can see all the steps pretty clearly. Um, I think there's even some of my mistakes you're going to get to see in here. So I'm going to put this stuff up and we're going to come back. And what I have, y'all, that is a swivel from the fishing department of either a sports store or your big box store. And then that is a little bit of fishing well not a little bit that's it's like 200 yards of fishing line and it is I'm trying to tell y'all 12 pound fishing line it's just something I picked up and keep on hand if I want to make something like this so I cut out quite a long length probably almost two feet much longer than I knew I needed and I'm gonna find one end of it in just a second. First, I've got some, what are those, crimp beads. And those are some pretty heavy duty ones. They're not as heavy duty as I wanted, but they're going to work just fine. And I'm only going to use like three of those. So the first thing I do is find the hole on my crystal and I'm going to insert um, about four inches through and then I'm going to turn and loop it back around. Now this is not completely necessary, but because this crystal is so heavy and fabulous I wanted to give it a little extra security so I've got it looped through I'm going to try a third time to loop it through but it just doesn't doesn't feel right so I just leave it at the two so there's me bringing it in a third time and I'm like mm, let me think about that is that what I'm doing I don't know well maybe maybe I did do it yeah, I, anyway, I looped it through a couple of times, and then I am stringing on from the other end one of those crimp beads. I'm just using silver crimp beads because I knew I had the, the like heavier, stronger ones in the silver. Meanwhile, my swivel, my fishing swivel, is a gunmetal, but you can find those in all different kinds of colors in your, like I said, big box store or something like that. Just, it's one of those things that... I like to have because it lets that crystal spin a little bit so it's not so stiff. All right, I've brought in my crimping pliers and I am going to bend that crimp. And then I'm going to turn everything at like a 90 degree angle so I can smash it down a little bit. And I'm going to realize it's not smashed completely, so I'll do a second a second good strong smash to make sure it's in there because the last thing I want is for this crystal to fall and hit the ground. It is far too gorgeous to to get damaged. It'll make me sad. Plus I've got it hanging in my sunroom where my dog spends most of her days and I don't want her to have glass shards in the floor. So I'm going to make this, you know, pretty strong. All right, so I'm going to string on my first bead which is one of these rondelles and it's going to go, I'm going to try to get it to cover up, yeah, go over that tail end and then trim 
And this is, I know this is hard to see. That fishing line is just absolutely clear. And that's why I wanted to make sure this was regular speed so you could get a chance to see everything. So I trimmed that fishing line. And now I'm just going to string on the rest of everything. I've got one of these little filigree bead caps. Y'all, I was having trouble seeing the hole on that. So I had to go put it in the light. And then one of these large, um, almost blue crystals. And then another filigree bead cap. And one of those pale blue, I think that's what I'm doing, is one of the pale blue rondelles. Woo, words. And I'm liking the blue because for me, the blue is like the sky and the beach. And yeah, just pretty. Blue is my favorite color. So this secret sash box, I, yeah, I absolutely loved. All right, so there was that rondelle. And here's one of these boho beads. I like, this one is the only bead I put on here that isn't, transparent I but it's got all that sparkle so it still sparkles even without having all the facets and everything so then I'm just repeating that pattern on the other side a, a rondelle a bead cap um, a big crystal a bead cap and then finally another blue rondelle to finish it off so this is just kind of a mirror image with that boho bead in the center all right, so once I get that on there, I'm gonna go ahead and put on another crimp bead. And I'm t there I'm testing the weight and trying to decide exactly where I want my crimp bead, if I want it up a little bit higher, if I want the two, but yeah, I don't want these to jiggle around so much. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that crimp bead on. And I'm going to crimp that there. I'm not going to fold my fishing line over. I'm just trying to make it so those beads don't jiggle around too much. Now there's going to, because I didn't realize when I was doing this, there's going to be a little space in between because I'm bending those beads a little. So there's just a tiny bit of space between that top bead and that crimp bead when I straighten it back out. And that's fine. It gives it just a little bit of movement if it does twist or spin or whatever. Um, but it's not going to have those bounce around too much. Then I'm going to add my swivel. So, and I get this backwards first. I try to put the swivel on first, but then I realize, yeah. Um, and I even was going to like wrap that several times, but see, I'm putting the crimp bead on and I was like, oh y'all, <laughs> no, crimp bead first. And of course the, the loop on that swivel, will, um, whatchamacallit, will fit right over that crimp bead, but it's okay. And if you don't have a swivel, that's fine. Just make a loop at the top and you can hang this on a nail or a hook from the loop. I just like the swivel in case it wants to turn. It's, it's not a necessary thing. And if you're picking up the fishing line, you might as well go ahead and grab one of the swivels too. It's just a neat little thing to have on hand. All right, so I tried to make that loop through twice and I don't know what I was thinking. So that's, again, like I said, you get to see my mistakes in this. Everything's always a little bit of a learning, but I realized I didn't need that. So I'm gonna pull that out and then just kind of that fishing line goes back through that crimp bead and I'm gonna go ahead and crimp that down. Now I have a small nail hang over a window in my sunroom that I was able to slip that swivel on and again if you want something bigger or whatnot you could add another loop or a piece of cord or something through that swivel and hang that but I found that the small nail had worked just fine for for what I was doing so once I crimped down my crimp bead I trimmed the excess and I am done y'all it was just a matter of hanging this up on a on a nail I've got some pictures of this completed project here at the end. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to let me know. If you like this, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and make sure to go check out those secret stash boxes over at Jesse James Beads. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching. Bye.